This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we are going to review Christian Dior's Haute Couture Spring Summer 2021 Fashion Show by Maria Grazia Curie. Um, the reason why I have waited uh, this long to review that particular show is because, um, for those of you who might be watching this video in the future, might not know, but I waited until St. Valentine's Day or St. Valentine's Weekend to review this particular show in one of my live streams. Yes, this live stream is a live stream, so it will be reviewed live. I do have my wonderful live co-reviewers in the chat to my side here. And uh, the theme is love. The theme is actually tarot, but tarot card readings are about the future, about passion, about love, basically. So it's, it's an interesting take on Christian Dior being, having been quite superstitious in his own way and a fan of tarots. It's an interesting take on that type of um, belie belief or those type of beliefs, beliefs, oh my God, what am I talking about? <laughs> those types of beliefs. Hmm, that Christian Dior had through the eyes and artistic directorship of Maria Grazia Curie presented in an haute couture show. Now, because we are in a very difficult situation, lockdown being that, that situation for obvious reasons, um, I've been asking myself, how are fashion shows going to take place? Some fashion show houses like Chanel did their fashion show like they always do, without being that creative, really, they just stuck to what they always do. They always go to the Grand Palais and they have their fashion show, only they didn't have audience, just a couple of actresses. But they stuck to their, I don't know how many, 40, 50 looks. And that's the thing. There is a minimum amount of looks that you have to create to remain within the foundation for Haute Couture of Paris and France. Um, there's, there's a lot of looks that you have to create by hand to be deemed haute couture in order to participate in the haute couture fashion week. So I do not know how Dior managed to maintain the status of haute couture because they really toned down the amount of pieces that they showed in this video clip. So it wasn't a fashion show. We're going to see a video clip. It's like a, almost like a short film. Um, so maybe exceptions were made because of the lockdown so a fashion house did not need to create so many pieces as usually is necessary in order to be deemed an haute couture show and take part in an haute couture uh, fashion week. So, or Dior just for one season stepped out and just did their own haute couture without participating necessarily, you know, because they didn't do a show even. So I do not know that. The specifics about the reasons, but I have to say, what we are about to see is very fascinating. Uh, it's our limited amount of pieces but each piece represents one tarot card that's kind of more or less the idea behind this collection and the intricate workmanship that went i mean they look like costumes for theater or from another time more than clothes that you just buy if you're a billionaire and you just wear it on this no this stuff it has a historic context so what we're about to see is an interesting short film of artistic approach to a very old school approach to fashion making. We're talking centuries ago type of approach to creating clothes, but with a modern vision. And the modern vision does not come through the actual cuts and patterns of the clothes, but rather through the video, the way the artist uh, filmed and conceived the whole idea and storyline for this tarot card session. In, in haute couture clothing. Now, I have to remind you that um, the visuals that we're about to see, we can see them because they are within fair use because I will be reviewing them on YouTube, but I cannot play the original audio of the video, unfortunately, because that is deemed under copyright. So I have added a new audio, which is not as good as the original audio, obviously, but it'll have to do. It's, it's, it's what we can do in order to appreciate this collection together. It, it has a different audio. So bear in mind that the audio has changed. All right, now before we get to the show 
And before we start reviewing it together, uh, if you haven't already, but like my channel, please consider subscribing to my channel. Push that subscription button. And even more, next to the subscription button, you can push the join button and become a member of my channel today. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob All Spelled Together. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and members who have already pledged. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. And thank you to all my co-reviewers that are watching me live now in the chat to the side. Thank you guys so much. Let's get to the fashion show. And after that, we're going to chat a little about it. Le Chateau du Tarot. So we got the Tarot card Chateau. And we had the Le Chateau des Dames, which was uh, the Chanel Métier Da collection. And now we have Haute Couture also with the Chateau. Tarot card reading. I love the lady's hands. So she's asking her to, to pick a card. And the young lady chooses one. She says, like anyone. And the first card has been chosen. And there it is. The card transforms into a dress. And a key is given to our protagonist. another dress and here's the chateau and we are slowly getting lost inside the corridors of this chateau we see that this is interesting because the movement of the dress you see is different than a classic fashion show approach quick walking down the runway. We actually get to see, yes, it's more shoulders, but look, we get to see details in a very different way than we would be used to seeing them in a fashion show, in a catwalk runway scenario. So she saw a, a boy, didn't go towards him, rather decides to move away from him. And here's another card. another dress now she has to choose the right amount of weight and the fool appears and tries to help our protagonist by pointing out right weight and I find it fascinating that the fool is helping us through a serious situation it's the lightheartedness of something that actually gets you through so I like that message a lot but we don't know because this the gaze you're like wait it's creepy and scary is the fool gonna trick us we're gonna find out is the fool deceiving us or not? Seems like the fool did not deceive us because the protagonist gains access to the next level. And now we see the boy, which of course you can recognize immediately is the same actress. It's her male side. Or so we are led to believe. So the boy that we saw at the beginning is now also in a different, is in, a, in one of the corridors and doesn't know which direction to choose. And the fool is kind of making fun of the boy and saying, go left, go right. Ah, you can go left and right. Ah, don't worry about it. Go in that direction. And the boy trusts the fool and goes. and enters another room where, of course, another card awaits. This is gorgeous, you guys. 
I mean, just the whole scene is so wonderful. You see how the clothes... Now imagine an haute couture piece upside down, hanging. It's a wonderful concept. It's actually relatively new as well. Um, and to see how the bustier and the whole crop top here maintains its shape even though the body is upside down. It's just beautiful craftsmanship. Secret passage. Now check out that headpiece, you guys. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, we're back to the female side of ourselves because now we're starting to realize that actually it's the same. It's one soul. It has the male and the female in it. It's always in balance. We're always balancing male and female, you guys. Within every one of ourselves. She encountered the devil, I would say. The devil that is a little bit <laughs> reminiscent of Maleficent. So I was like, oh, is Angelina Jolie going to pop up? But uh, no, no. They kept it classy. Not that Angelina isn't classy, but, you know. A little bit of sexual tension. Very, very interesting. I'm liking that. But, of course, it never goes too far. It's just... And how those wings just close her. Wonderful. The embrace. And now we have another card. And we have this wonderful landscape of fireflies. You know, well, landscape. It's not landscape, but they're just in the night. And you see, whenever the boy is represented, the boy is always... There's a blue hue surrounding him. There's always night. So whenever we have the boy, you see, it's like there's this blue patina, blue filter. And the girl usually has more yellow tones. They're using more daytime to depict the girl. But, of course, the boys kind of were leading towards the point where the male and female should meet sooner or later, where our soul that has been split finds its way together and unifies again. Here, we have mysteries, many, many mysteries that are unsolved, though. This is also reference to Sleeping Beauty, obviously. Now, first one, okay, when I saw this the first time, the moon, I was like, oh my god, that headpiece to die for. I thought it was actually a hat, like a headpiece slash hat. But when we see a close up, it's actually a wig. I was a little bit disappointed. I would have wished it were an actually constructed headpiece that you just put on, not a whole wig. But nevertheless, gorgeous silhouette. And here they meet. The boy is the boy is waiting, and the girl, you know, she's like, oh, okay. I just kissed the devil, but okay. <laughs> this is death. Now, death is gorgeously depicted. These gloves with the metal hands. Now, that is something, again, Maria Grazia Curie, sorry, girl, but you stole that from, again, John Galliano, because remember John Galliano's first show for Marta Margiela? To die for, his depiction of, of, of death that silhouette that he had of the models, he even made their shoulders bigger so that they looked even more like to die for. So this depiction of death, as poetic as it is within this context, it doesn't come even close to John Galliano's uh, death for Marta Margiela. Yes, post-Dior era for uh, Galliano. And the boy and the girl meet. The male and the female finally unite of course it's the same actress or actor i listen i don't i don't know you know in today's day and age maybe it's a them there not a he or she so they unite <laughs> the 
the yin and the yang, if you if you may. And this is how tarot cards are read. When you sit down to get a tarot cards read, you split up, you you fracture into many different particles and segments. And then the person that is reading your cards, or if you're reading them yourselves, you regather all those parts because you split the cards and then you read them together, you unify them again. And once you've unified them, you find your way back to yourself. Here we are, le fou. So this is so elegant, how they explain every construction of the garment. La tempérance, and then you have robe drapée, oh, I can't read it all, but anyway. Unfortunately, they fade out too quickly. The texts, obviously, at the Christian Dior, you know, when I was watching it the first time, I would pause and then read the description of the garment. Of course, these garments, oh, the devil, they're much more complicated than this, than this short text that explains what they are, but I still found it so elegant. Here's La Papesse, and then the description of the, of the garment, not of the card, but... You see how they, they're portraying death, the card, and then they're describing the materials used to create the dress as if that was the description of the card when you're reading the tarot. So it's really, really beautiful. The setting is amazing. It's very, very aesthetical. Really, really beautiful. I mean, but again, this is a theatrical depiction of haute couture, which to me, haute couture should be. You know, when John Galliano used to do Dior, his haute couture shows for Dior were, they were theater pieces. And a lot of those dresses were really showstoppers. They were meant to be shown in museums and, and worn on stage. Uh, it, these are very historic. They have very deep rooted historical references. And yes, for the most part, these will end up in the Dior archives. Collectors will buy them, you know, the billionaires and millionaires who can afford it. but. We're not going to see many of these on runways, on red carpets. I don't even know if we're going to see any red carpets in the next year because of the lockdown. But for whatever reason, these pieces are beautiful, especially beautiful because of the context in which they are shown. Check out how incredibly photographed they are. Everything has a historic context. Everything has a depth. Um, there's a darkness to it. So uh, the director is Matteo Garrone, an Italian, Maria Grazia Chiuri is also Italian. Um, in fact, they shot this in Italy. There's a whole um, I, um, Italian crew that participated. You can see uh, uh, The Fool is Carlotta Antonelli. Uh, the La Corte Mancien is Giusy Merli, another Italian. La Papesse is Coco Rebecca. Edogame may be living in Italy, but Maria Brogi. Maratron, okay, they're going too fast. Matilde Giannetti, so this, uh, Martina Lamanna, so a lot of them are Italian. Uh, Andrea Farri did the music, which we, we can't hear, sorry, Andrea, but, you know, copyright. Uh, Marco Spolettini did the editing. So, as I said, within the context of the show, of the setting, of creating this short film, this is beautiful. And I have to say, it is so beautiful that it almost has a Jim Henson quality to it. I love, I'm a big fan of Jim Henson, uh, in particular the Dark Crystal and the Labyrinth. This had a lot of tones of the Labyrinth. Now in the Labyrinth, when they shot the movie, of course, the clothes, the costumes had to be usable so that the actors could run, jump and dance and do stuff that, of course, these um, models did not need to do within the context of an haute couture show. But everything is set up so beautifully, and this is something rare uh, within haute couture, to be able to enjoy it as mere mortals as we are, because I mean, these dresses are probably going to cost you 200000 100000 200000 dollars a piece. So, as I said, almost nobody can afford them, but I love the fact that Dior uh, created a short film so beautiful and deep that actually those dresses can f be fully enjoyed by us through this video. They would not have been fully enjoyed if they were just walking down a red carpet or just walking down a runway a catwalk. As beautiful as the setting and the setup and the stage could have been made for that catwalk, it wouldn't have delivered the right punch as it did within a context of a short film. 
with the right lights, mood, setting, and music, which again, I repeat, sorry, we couldn't hear the original music. But I hope that the music that I chose was good enough for you, that you've enjoyed it uh, nevertheless, because this is the only way we could have actually uh, done the review together of this show, by choosing music that is copyright free. So my verdict is um, a beautiful show. Uh, Maria Grazia Curie, this is the first time that I actually got to hand it to you, girl. You did a good job. And, but again, it only works within the context of a framework of a movie and a historical background. This does not work to me, for me as a modern day haute couture collection for people to buy and wear. This works as, as an art piece in itself to be enjoyed within this movie. And then to one day, you know, say, you know, like for example, I'm a huge fan of uh, Stanley Kubrick and The Shining, uh, and it's wonderful to say, you know, well, or even more so, uh, Space Odyssey, 2001 A Space Odyssey, to have a furniture piece, to have one of the costumes from that movie, to have um, the cutlery that they used in the spaceship in that movie, you know, to you could say, well, this, this was used in that movie. So the quality of this haute couture show is that type of quality. It's like to say, this dress was in that movie. Uh, this dress is so beautiful because it, it, it comes to its full shine within that movie. Now, the problem here is this movie will be forgotten next season because it's, it is what it is. It's a short film meant to portray and frame this collection. The clothes weren't made to enhance the movie, but rather the movie wasn't made to create the, the right framework for the clothes. And that's why, unfortunately, this is the downside of this whole situation. It's going to be forgotten. Give it a couple of seasons and other things are going to happen. If these clothes, however, were utilized within a feature film made by a famous director with characters that actually speak, you know, the, you know, two hour movie with substance, with a storyline, with psychological depth to it, that went, you know, people gone to the cinemas, to the movies to see it and all that surround, all that mythology surrounding the release of a wonderful historic movie, then these clothes would have had even more importance and more depth. Unfortunately, as beautiful as the short film was, the clothes are sacrificed to the fact that in, a, in one season's time, there's going to be a new show and this will be completely forgotten. And this is a pity. So I think, Maria Grazia Curie, um, what needs to be done here is actually implementing all of these wonderful, I call them costumes, works of art. They're costumes more than a collection of just clothes in a real movie, in a full length, feature length movie. So call me girl. Let's talk. Okay, let's get to the chats. Let me see what you guys got to say. Uh, Mr. Ruben Fairchild says, is this live or fake news? It is live, but you know what they say, Mr. Ruben Fairchild, you got to fake it till you make it. Rich Mitt says, yay. <laughs> Aisha says, Maria Grazia, cutie. <laughs> Now Robert says, oh no, not Maria. Well, she is the artistic director of Dior, so women. Aisha says, I've watched the Dior Tarot film. It's beautiful. Jack says, as someone who practices spirituality with Tarot, this show was absolutely perfect in my opinion. MK says, fashion show review, my favorite. And I haven't seen this one yet. Aisha says, I agree, Jack. I know that she's not been perfect for Dior in all her pieces, but I love her. She's so sincere and cute. Robert says, hit the like button, y'all. Oh, thank you, Robert. Jack says, I had as much fun watching this show as I do watching old McQueen shows, and that says something. Oh, that, Jack, that does say a lot. That does say a lot. Aisha says, get subscribing, lovelies. Yes, guys, subscribe to my channel if you like what you're seeing. But, oh. oh, Fatima Rivera has become a member. Thank you so much, Fatima. Big heart to you. Thank you for becoming a member of the Fashion Bunker. Thank you so much. Jack says, I love the main model. She's gorgeous. It looks like the others a little bit, says MK, uh, with um, Nicole Kidman. Um, Jack's, uh, Jack says, 
this mourning outfit um, in the start is fascinating. Who is she mourning? Well, you know, you usually go to get your cards read if, if you think you're losing somebody, if you're scared that you might lose somebody, if you're hoping that somebody that you're infatuated with might also reciprocate their love to you. Maybe the mourning is the mourning of the soul and of the heart. Because we're all in mourning, you guys. We're all goths. Deep down inside, we're all gothic in, in the bottom of our hearts. Uh, lovely wigs, says Jack. Aisha says, me too. She's beautiful. Oh, the ambience, says Candy Fluff. Debbie says, very creative concept. Kira says, stunning. Jack says, and the approach to gender is great. Oh, it's a wonderful approach to gender. I agree with you. Jack says, is she falling in love with herself, her male identity? Headpiece on the justice dress is great. Candy Fluff says, these are costumes. Wow. MK says to Candy Fluff, the ambience is very reminiscent of Alejandro Amenabar. Aisha says, I'm so happy to be watching this with you guys. Oh, thank you, Aisha. Silke says, fool looks like Julia Roberts in Hook. True. I totally agree with you, Silke. It does look like a younger Julia Roberts. The judge's dress is stunning, says Olive Oil. Jack says, two-spirit kind of vibes. Candy Fluff says, love the headpiece on the first model. Olive Oil says, so incredibly creative. Jack says, the fool inside us will always eventually tell us the truth. I agree. Jack says, the fool is setting the two of them up on their journey. The hanged man outfit. Ah, oh, I was stunned. Yeah, it was gorgeous. And the fact that it was hanging. Mm. Seeing this from a new perspective, says Jack. The imagery is incredible, says Aisha. The embroider or piece. Uh, Candy Fluff says, the embroider or piece work. Wow. Or the embroidery is, is, is wow. Aisha says, is that the bar jacket? Um, they are so creative, beautiful. Jack says, the intimate scene is amazing. All of all, love this so much more already compared to the snooze fest that was Chanel with Kaziragi, waxing poetic about books. So distasteful. <laughs> Silke says, gorgeous devil. Jack says, sleeping with the devil. Fatima says, finally I'm a member. Thank you, Fatima, again so much, sweetie, for becoming a member. Silke says, Midnight Poison setting. It is very Midnight Poison. Do you think we would have got this concept without the pa uh, Lucas asks, um, no, we would not have. We would have gotten perhaps the tarot concept, but it would have been on our runway and more clothes would have been created. Um, more looks would have been created and it would have been a different mood altogether. And our moods would be different because we would have lived different lives than we do now. Woo! Yay, Fatima says Candy Fluff. Yeah, welcome, Fatima. Jack says, the moon. Wow. This is truly haute couture, says Olive Oil. Oh, it's a hairpiece. Yeah, the moon was a hairpiece. Jack Dean says, um, no, I think it's better the head... Oh, I'm glitching, aren't I? I think it's better the headpiece is made of hair. It means it's a part of her. More natural. She is the moon. She isn't wearing it. Yeah. Yeah, I totally see that. From a psychological perspective, it makes total sense. You're right. Stunning, stunning show, says Olive Oil. Jack says, I love that they combined the hair. Remember the Madonna Versace photo shoot, says Aisha? Yes, I do. MK says, this is more cinema costuming, very similar to Dracula by Coppola, or Snow White and the Huntsman uh, and Amenabar. Jack says, and the end scenes are perfect. I would say this is a perfect, perfect show. No more fashion weeks. More of this, please. Richmond says, should I get some chocolate? Silke, yes, you should. Silke says, should I? Uh, love Tarot and love this film. Candy Fluff says, these headpieces to die for. The garments are sumptuous. What a show. Kira says, love vintage. MK says, it is a brilliant revamping idea of haute couture. Jack says, la rue de la fortune was insanely good. Richmond says, love vintage perfume. I loved this video, says I'm Louis. It's totally couture. I miss these type of shows. Jack says, they should release a tarot deck with, uh, with these on them. Silke says, would love to watch it on a big cinema screen. Candy Fluff says, yes. The way these were showcased was perfect. Candy Fluff says, very smart. Miss Marie says, which vintage perfume, Rich Mitch, do you like the most? Niem says, I feel like there is a lack of lights. I could not see these pieces that clear. Yes, it's mystery, my dear. It's about feeling them more than seeing them in some cases. Amazing, says Fatima. Jack says, it shouldn't have been brightly lit. It has to be dark. 
Rich Mitch says, all of them. All, I love all vintage perfumes, says Rich Mitch. Jack says, the film is about depth. Audrey says, I watched The Dark Crystal last weekend. So, so good. Audrey, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal is to die for. That is haute couture. The Skeksis dresses and outfits. And if you watch The Dark Crystal, now jump into Netflix's um, Dark Crystal, The Age of Resistance. What a wonderful show. And shame on you, Netflix, for having canceled the show. Because it's an art piece. Um, Darla, hey, Darla, welcome to the chat, Sudi. Thank you for all of this beauty. It is thirst quenching indeed. Miss Marie says, do not get it. Why all this fuss about tarot cards in the art world? I notice art is becoming darker. Well, Miss Marie, we're living in dark times, but also Miss Marie, um, Christian Dior was obsessed with tarot. So this was dedicated to him. It's an homage to him. So it's not about just the current times. It's about what actually went down in his life many, many decades ago. And it's being brought back to light. Jack says, I would totally wear those clothes in life if I could. Miss Marie says, uh, Loewe is cool, but is that vintage perfume? <laughs> We're talking about perfumes on the side, okay. Um, imagine the weight of the fabric. I loved how they shot in the shadows then gave glaring lights. It makes the garments appear richer still. Audrey says, I find my imagination can always run wild when I watch a Dior film so elegant and majestic. MK says, that's right, Jacob, on a runway, people might be reacting like, what the heck does it have to do with Christian Dior's heritage? Um, Miss Marie says, uh, again, perfume talk. <laughs> Jack says, the embroidery on the clothes references the tarot they represent, too. Um, Dara says, directed by Sofia Coppola, I would see these clothes featured in those worlds. I mean, if if Sofia Coppola were to direct a movie and get these clothes, but, you know, all of them have egos. They would probably say, no, I want costumes made especially for my movie. I'm not going to use stuff that's already been shown elsewhere. Egos, all of them. We don't have to forget the show, though. No, we don't have to forget it, Jack. You're right. I'm just talking about the general, you know how it is in the fashion world. Miss Money says, fashion is becoming a ritual. Bring Stanley Kubrick back for a remake for Eyes Wide Shut. Oh, I would never remake Eyes Wide Shut. I think Eyes Wide Shut is perf perfection the way it is right now. Um, MK says uh, to Jack, during Christian Dior's era, did they make any reference to tarot cards? Or was he just fond of tarot as a hobby in his private life? Uh, I believe that they did not reference them as much. Maybe on some embroidery pieces, but it wasn't so pushing it, like Maria Grazia Curie has been pushing it for some time. Miss Marie says, what the F is going on in this fashion industry? Jack says, I can't remember, uh, but this show is about a wider historic story than just Dior. Well, of course, because Maria Grazia Curie wishes to always give it a, some sort of political connotation and context, uh, socio-political context. So it's not just about Dior. It's a pretext. And then she's pushing it further. Um, Miss Marie says, Rich Mitch, you have a great taste around the time I was born. Stunning clothes. The headpieces are gorgeous and the whole show is magical, says Letty. Miss Winnie says gothic, but it's becoming grotesque, today's art. Lucas says, so Deco, would you be in favor of more complex settings like this one and less runways? Um, not always, depending on the show. I would always think about what do the clothes need? Do the clothes need more movie atmosphere or do they need a more traditional setting and presentation, uh, runway presentation? So it would depend on, on the collection itself. I wouldn't generalize. Jack says, no, Tarot and Toile de, de Joie are, are historic. Can't tie them to a brand. I agree with you, Jack. It was actually good. Wow, says Robert. It was a good show. Yeah. Amina says, hi, everyone. Glad to join in. Welcome, Amina. Welcome to the chat. Um, Fede says, I feel like the protagonist, both male and female. Uh, you feel like the... Yes, Faden, this is very interesting. 
uh, because especially younger generations of people, and I think this is where Maria Grazia Curie really nailed it, whether or not it was intentional from her end, I do not know. But I have the feeling also that younger generations today, you know, people who are in their late teens, early 20s, are much more gender fluid uh, than past generations and are much more open to experiences and are not afraid of love, are not afraid of being attracted to the same sex or the opposite sex. or And, and it's not for provocation's sake either. It's literally a more open-minded nature, human nature, which is actually what human nature is all about. It's just that society has kept us in chains for so many centuries. Slowly things are opening up, but I find it a breath of fresh air. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, the people that are following my channel, uh, Instagram or subscribers to my YouTube channel that are really, really young. I mean, they're a breath of fresh air. The comments that, that you guys leave, the, the type of, um, interaction uh, that that you instigate is just so beautiful because it really shows me that there is hope for humanity it really because i encounter very little prejudice and very very little judgment from younger people nowadays than i do from you know people in their 30s 40s 50s and it is a breath of fresh air to me because um I feel that at least in that respect, humanity is evolving towards a better place, a more open-minded place. So kudos to you, Fede, and all of y'all out there who are, you know, in your teens and your early 20s that have an open heart and an open mind because you are the future of this world. So if you show an open heart and open mind, we're good to go. Then the world does have a chance, you know. Um, Lucas says, you're right about watching this, I see so much possibilities artistically. Um, MK Lucas says, well, professionals do need runways to see the garments in real. Well, MK, but the professionals, the buyers, you know, they actually get to see the collection can be set up for them, which it always is. Pardon me. The fashion show is a very emotional impactful visual thing lasts a couple of minutes but then you go actually to see to touch into the showroom you go to touch the materials you go to order and buy the pieces the ordering is always done in the showroom it's not done on the runway so that being said professionals don't need to see a runway not necessarily only if they need to see clothes in action while you're walking because the buyers go to the showrooms later on to actually touch the clothes, see them on models if they need to see them on models, and then order from the showroom. That's how it's usually done. Um, Miss Marie says, Jacob, you should do a Kubrick homage with perfumes. Oh, that's a great idea, Miss Marie. Miss Marie says, Jacob, oh yeah, I did that one already. Niem says, I think the idea to make this kind of video is much better than a fashion show on the runway now because it creates less. Cha. Okay, because, right. Well, we can't say certain things, uh, Niem, but yeah. I wish to them film more details of the pieces. <laughs> hmm. Uh, well, um, I think every piece is also photographed. So if you do go on the Christian Dior website, you get to actually see details of that collection as well. It's not like they're just showing you the short film and that's it. You actually get to see a whole collection of photos, some close-up details of the collection as well. So we just here went through the mood of the atmosphere through the short film, but you can actually see more details if you go on their website. All right, you guys, thank you so much for co-reviewing this show with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I hope this was good. And I can tell you this, or I can tell you this much. Maria Grazia Curie, you know, girl, I got, you know, I listen. I stand corrected. When I am, when I stand corrected, I do stand corrected. Uh, was not a fan of what y'all did up until now. Maybe this was just an exception. Let's see what you do next. But this, I really enjoyed. I really liked. Um, was it typical French haute couture? In a way, yes. But in a way, it transcended it. It became more theatrical. So it, it was borderline. But the whole context of it, the whole 
thing put together within that short film really worked for me. So you get a thumbs up from me, Maria Grad Security and the Christian Dior team. You guys did a great job with this Haute Couture collection, Spring Summer 2021. If you guys like what you're seeing here, um, you can consider subscribing to my channel, push the subscription button now, and or you can even go further and push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member of the Fashion Bunker. You get extra perks by becoming a member of the Fashion Bunker and you get access to videos that do not come to YouTube. You can also join me on Patreon for the same access to perks. Super Deco Balls spelled together on Patreon. And you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Super Deco Balls spelled together there as well. You can also join me on my two Chanel dedicated profiles that I curate dedicated to Coco. One is called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to the life of Chanel. And uh, the other one is called Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, dedicated to my Chanel collection. And whatever the brand is up to these days. So you guys, I'm all for haute couture. I love it. It is a very, very limited art and very limiting in many ways as well because 99.9999% of humanity can only enjoy it from a distance through photos and videos. Uh, so it is a very strange type of art. They're clothes, they're made to be worn and yet almost nobody can afford to ever wear them. That's why they're connected even more to a dream-like kind of state where you dream, where you fantasize about living a life in which those clothes would suit your lifestyle to begin with, because most of our lifestyles don't even suit those clothes. But haute couture is there to dream and to envision possible realities in the most expanded and hyped up version of reality. You know, reality isn't like that, but in our dreams, it can be like that. And haute couture is just that, a dream. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please do thumb it up. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.